I've always liked, you know, the look of like the more sort of modified look, I guess, you know, piercings and tattoos and stuff like that. Um, so I've always been attracted to that sort of style, I guess. You know, you, you can't tell just by looking at somebody what kind of a person they are. The way, in, in my experience, the more that I change who I am on the outside to like who, who I am on the inside, the more comfortable I feel. If I'm comfortable with who I am, then other people's opinions aren't going to affect that. You know, when, when I was younger, I saw uh, a lot of other people with tattoos and, um, you know, in a lot of the bands that I listened to and stuff like that, um, quite a lot of people had piercings. I appreciated the way that it looked on other people, so it's the same as anybody. I mean, you see a haircut that you like and you think, oh, maybe that'll suit me, so it's just exactly the same as that, really. The main question that everybody always asks is, did it hurt? Obviously having the piercings done initially was quite painful because someone's shoving a needle through your face. But then the process of stretching them shouldn't, shouldn't be painful at all. If you make a hole in your body and you put something through it, then your body is going to make that hole slightly bigger naturally so that it will fall out and then it can heal over. So if every time that your body makes the hole slightly bigger, you put in something that is, again, slightly bigger, then it will heal at a slightly bigger size and then you can just keep going with the process. There's, there's a lot of different ways that you can stretch um, piercings. Um, there's a lot of unsafe ways, like using tapers, for example, which are you know, like a spike sort of thing, is small on one end and then bigger on the other end, and you can just force it through, but you can cause a lot of problems like that. Um, you can get, you know, scar tissue build up and um, what's called blowouts, where basically the, the inside um, starts to come, um, it sort of folds outside basically, and then it, it doesn't heal properly. I accidentally broke my own earlobe when I was younger. Um, Basically, the, the place that I was ordering jewellery from um, accidentally sent me the wrong size um, and I put it in anyway and got stuck and um, I was told that a blood vessel in my ear split and got twisted so there was part of my earlobe that wasn't getting any circulation at all and it went a funny colour, smelled really bad, fell off, extremely painful, but yeah, that was a lesson I only needed to learn once. Always measure your jewellery before you try and wear it. No matter where you bought it from, no matter who says, you know, this is the size that I've sold you, always measure it before you try and wear it. Two in either nostril. Um, I've got. Uh, this one, my septum, that one there, my filtrum. These two, just above my top lip. Um, these two, in the corners of my mouth, my cheeks, and then four on my bottom lip. And then obviously this one. Uh, a normal gauge piercing would be done with a needle, um, like a, a hollow point needle. And then um, dermal punctures, are, they're bigger and it's flat. So it's basically like a hollow tube and they get a piece of wood. And they, so if your ear, for example, they'll put a piece of wood behind and then they'll just push it through and twist it. And then that takes a big chunk of cartilage out. If you have something punched at a slightly bigger size, then it's much easier to stretch after that because some of the tissue has been removed instead of sort of expanding and healing around it. Everybody's different at the end of the day as well. I mean, some people might be able to stretch half a millimetre at a time with no problems. Some people, will, you know, will have to be half, half that size and some people even smaller. So you need to make sure that whoever's doing it is someone that you can trust to do it properly and not accidentally mutilate your face in an irreversible way. One of the things that makes it difficult, obviously, is actually getting jewellery in small enough increments to be able to do it safely. So these days, all of the jewellery that I get, um, I tend to get custom made. Um, there's a couple of people that I um, have become friends with um, in Mexico. This guy called Emiliano, um, he runs a business called Paradisio. He you know, always takes a lot of care to make sure that everything is exactly the way that I need it, um, which is why I've got quite a few of the pieces that I'm wearing at the moment are made of 
um, Chapas amber, um, which is basically like fossilised tree sap from like millions of years ago. I like to try and set a positive example when I can for the rest of the community as well, because there's always people that are going to look at people like me and think, oh my God, is he going to rob me? Is he going to stab me or something like that? So I, I'll try and be as, as nice as I can to try and, you know, impact their perception of other people who might choose to look similarly. There's always going to be people that don't like it. There's always going to be people that do like it. Just at the end of the day, the only person's opinion who really matters when it comes to the way that you look is your own. And if that's something that you want to do, do it. Don't let anybody tell you not to.